Welcome to Kellis Corner. Today, hopefully a good nostalgia trip for me with this package that I got all the way from France. Motherfucker! So let's first start by unpacking it. And I hope I can mend this one because it was sold as not working and if not then I hope I still have a second option with a bid that is currently running for a, uh, e a very worse version of this but at least the innards I could then use this is it this was my watch since 1987 until 1993 And it is unique now and very, very, very costly if you have a working version. They go around 400 to 600 and this non-working version boxed 250 euros. So I hope I can mend it. Let's have a closer look. Look at that. Ah, yeah, the computer connection. Uh, we have to solder a connector on it because it's not on there. I saw that on the picture. There we go. But that's an easy fix. Uh, this is trivial. And I will immediately put a DB9 on there. It used to come with a DB25. So. The instruction manuals. Oh my god, this is completely... There, all of it. And this is it. It's the first smart watch. And I actually used this in school to uh, every now and then have a little bit of uh, help during a test with some uh, constants that we otherwise had to memorize or some formulas and I put them in there. The funny thing is if you just browse through them it would always beep. And well, so I basically took it apart, so I know what it looks like from the inside, and removed the piezo speaker. That way it never woke me up in the morning, which was another plus. But it would never beep when I actually browsed through it in class, which I did a couple of times. I, I truly admit, software owners, yeah. Actually, this software is very well documented. It's uh, We're going to make a version, compile a version. That is uh, written in C, that should work on Linux. This is the actual five and a quarter inch floppy. It is also still there. Look at that. I just don't have a five and a quarter inch. It smells old, I love this. Yeah, I bought mine in 1987. When it first was released in 1984, it cost 199 guilders. So about $200 equivalent. Then in 97, literally across the street from here, I saw it in the showroom of the toy store for 50 guilders. They were knocked down all over the world to around $50. So yeah, then I just had to have it. So there it is. It is in pristine condition. It is in absolute pristine condition, except for the display. It is garbled, there is text on there. Now usually you can just reset this watch. So let's see if that works. If not, well, we will have to investigate. And like I said, otherwise I have another bit going on. Look at this, it is pristine, not a scratch on there, just a little there, but hey. It's lighter than I could imagine. So let's try this. Uh, and let's go over to me. Voice over three. Ray. So I uh, did the reset. And I didn't even notice that it was working. Because I am so in awe by the beauty of this thing. Look at this. This is 40 years old people. It is pristine. Even the sticker is there. No fatty skin things. It's, it's beautiful. Hey, a beep. A beep is good. A beep is good. Yeah, there it is. My realization was a bit late. <laughs> it's working. But my enthusiasm still the same. 
Now let's see if I remember how to put it in receive mode. Terminal and lock, I believe. Yeah, there you go, receive. I still remember how it works after 30 years. Time, yeah, awesome. So this one, 250 euros in pristine condition with box, quote unquote broken. It's just a reset. And you can now sell it up to 1200 euros. Well, around 600, I think is more reasonable. But yeah, wow, look at the quality of this thing. Awesome. Now the big question, is it Y2K compliant? Let's see. Okay. Yes, we're crossing into 2000s. But as soon as you hit 2020 and you go one year further, it's back to 1980. So I set mine to 1983. Great year. Well, this will be a really short episode. So I think we just continue by soldering a connector onto the serial terminal thingy. And I will show you how to do that, give some tips. And then we will upload with the new software I found. So the red wire is actually uh, the transmit. So the computer only sends data into the watch. The watch doesn't send anything back. The white is the ground. And then of course you have the shielding that you also solder to ground. Now the easiest way to solder these connectors is to actually fill the pin with solder. And then stick the wire into it by reheating that solder. Now usually you don't even need these control wires, the CTS, the RTS, DCD, but I add them anyways, just to be sure. Here it is with all the control wires attached to it. And let's hook it up and see what happens. I already put the watch in terminal mode. So it will receive data and now we will compile this new piece of code and run it. I find it fascinating that somebody in 2015 wrote this piece of code that actually uploads to this watch. Let's prepare the data to be sent. Now the original tool actually is a ASCII UI tool that allowed you to fill in the details. It was kind of tedious to use and it was written in basic, so really, really slow. So this approach by just creating a file and that will make sure that the offsets are calculated and the data types are set in front of it is really kind of convenient. And the most convenient part is that I always have the numbers of my crack whore and my dealer now on me. And of course, I shouldn't forget my weekly erotic massage. With happy ending. So uh, let's load it up. Now that you uh, behind, there was a typo, but it didn't matter. And you hear the watch beep and then it will send all of the two kilobytes. It can hold two kilobytes of data, massive, and then it will beep again. There we go. So it's on there. Let's look. So let's see my memos. Yes, Ohm's law. That is there. Then we have uh, acceleration, Mr. Newton, I believe. Then phone numbers, very important. My crack whore. I mean, a guy has needs. My dealer, maybe even more important. And that's it. And then we go to weekly alarms. My erotic massage. And it cuts it off nicely. I was wondering if the software was aware to cut it off to 12 characters. And it does it. That is really, really cool. Now I do hope that she doesn't cut it off, if you know what I mean. But it's working, yes. This is the smartwatch of the 80s. In all its 80s boxy glory. I love it. So there you have it. I bought myself a Seiko RC1000 data terminal watch that I used to own in 1987 to 1993. And it's really in near mint condition. Only a tiny scratch here, but that's it. So I bought it for 250 euros because it was non-working. Well, just the text was garbled. So I did a reset with those four buttons. Did it a couple of times and then it sprung to life. Then we connected a nice DB9 connector to that uh, little terminal adapter. We downloaded a program that somebody wrote in C in 1995. <laughs> and we uploaded the phone number of my beloved crack whore, my dealer, and a weekly reminder to go to my erotic massage. So yeah, I'm really happy with this, uh, especially since in this condition they go upwards to $800 now. It's insane. So uh, yeah, when you find something that is not working and you know 
it is worth a lot, go for it. Try to fix it. Usually you will get it working and for me this is a piece of nostalgia. Although there is one little caveat. The year doesn't go to 2023. So mine is now set to 83. That way I just add 40. My age. And I know what year it is. So yeah. I'm really happy with this. This brought back so much memories. I'm almost scared to wear it. But yeah, I bought it to wear it because it's a piece of nostalgia. So I hope you learned something and see you in the next one. Let's call my crack whore.